Hello everybody, I welcome you all to today's video. In today's video, we are going to learn about skills that's necessary for a researcher. So basically, we're going to see the top 10 research skills that every researcher must know. I'm Dr. Vaishali, Academic Specialist at Biotechnica and come let's explore the topic. So before even we see what are the top skills, we'll first see what are the categories of skills, right? In general, what are the categories of skills? The first category is nothing but functional skills. Now, what is functional skills? Functional skills are nothing but transferable skills. What do I mean by transferable? Say, for example, you're moving from one, say, job to another job, right? It's a little different job, but then you have the skill sets that's required for that job as well. So these are few skill sets that can be transferable, right? So they are mostly uh, designated using the verbs. Say, for example, like, you're good at organizing things, you're good at writing, right? So, so these are few of the skill sets that you will carry, you will need in any type of job that you do. So basically it will be transferable you know, along all verticals or uh, along horizontal job positions as well. So that is what is functional skills. Second is personal skills. Now what is personal skills? Personal skills is nothing but it reflects your personality trait, right? So it is mostly used as adjective. Say, for example, you're a very patient person, right? You are an independent worker. So such things. So these are few of the skills that you would have developed, say, from your childhood or your, you would have de developed through your life experiences, right? So those are your personal skills. The third category of skills is nothing but technical skills. So technical skills as we all know, it is based on the knowledge about the subject that you possess, right? So these are uh, mostly uh, referred to as in the noun form. For example, for a biotech researcher, few of the technical skills are say PCR or say how to use ELISA, what are the different protein purification techniques, do you know them? So th those are the technical skills that one can possess. So these are the three uh, categories of skills. Today we will be talking about the first two categories especially for a researcher that a researcher needs to have the functional skills as well as the personal skills. So the first skill that we'll be talking about is the curiosity, right? So you should have the curiosity about your subject, about your research, right? You should come up with questions. You, you can, you know, pose questions on what you're doing and how differently you can do. And also you should have the mind for critical thinking and, uh, you know, taking it forward in your research as well. So that is what we mean by curiosity. The second uh, skill that we're going to talk about is observation, right? So what is observation? Observation is whether to see whether you have the eye for details, right? Whether you are seeing what is important and uh, whether are you missing out on something. It's, it's very, very important for you to know that you're not missing out on something that's important, right? So yes, whether you have the eye for details. The next skill is reading skills. Now, why is it important? So you, when you are a researcher, before even you start your research, it's important for you to read and collect data that is already available. So in that cases, you should have uh, the skill set for reading. So reading not um, from, you know, A to Z, but what is important in a particular, say, research article, what is your takeaway, right? So such things. So it could be either research article or book or anything from your library or even online journals or say, you know, online news or any of those things. So what, what are the things that you should take from those uh, readings that you do and what are the things that you shouldn't take? So such skill is also very important. The next we are going to talk about is planning, right? So what is planning? It's the ability to collect the information, right? So you have got a lot of information. Now, where do you, how do you get these information? Whom do you contact to get these information? And where do you get these information from? And once you get all of these information, how do you plan your work? How do you plan your research work with the help of these informations that you've got, right? So that is what we mean by planning. Next is collecting the data, which is nothing but your actual research. You basically conduct your research and you get the your results and then you start collecting the results. You basically, after you plan your work, you go ahead and you do your research. Now, once you 
collect the data. Say for example, you've got the result. You know this is the reading from the spectrophotometer that you've got. Next, what you do, you start recording these data, right? How do you record? You can either make, uh, you know, you start making notes or you can use any tools that is available online so that you put all your information there at one place, right? It's very important that you have all of your information at one place and you organize it. So that's what we mean. You organize it step by step according to the protocol, what data that you have. So this is one of the important skill that a researcher should have. The next skill is about analyzing these data. Now you have the raw data, but then you cannot publish the raw data as it is, right? You will have to analyze them. Now, how do you analyze? Analyzing is nothing but interpreting your uh, result data. Now, how do you do this? You have various tools. You can do it through a graph or a drawing or just a table, a comparison table, a flow chart or whatever it is. So you, there are various tools that help you do these analyzing of your data. So you should be aware of these tools and how to use them as well. Next, you should be able to come up with what are the important findings from these analyzed data. So that is also very important, which will help you in concluding your research. Next is collaborating. Now, you should have the skill set that is required to collaborate with people. So PhD is not, you know, it's not going to be just an independent uh, self-sustaining work, but also it also involves collaborating with a lot of people, with your peers, with people from other department as well at times if needed. So yes, it's about research collaborations that I'm talking about and you should have the skill set that's required for teamwork, right? The next, uh, next skill that we're going to talk about is the writing skill. Now you have, say for example, done all your research, you've come up with data, you've analyzed your data and you've, you've also organized and you know that this is what uh, is your important findings from your research. Now, how do you tell it to the public? You tell it by writing, right? So what do you write? You can either write research papers, you can write grants, or it could be a thesis writing. So any of these technical writing, it could be. So yes, uh, so you should possess that writing skill as well, which is one of the soft skill that a researcher should have. The next is the presenting skills. Now, so one way of telling the public is writing and another way of telling the public or sharing your knowledge is through presentation skills. So these are also important skills that one should possess and you should also, depending on what you're going to present, what is the knowledge that you're going to share, you can also decide on what is the media type that you're going to use to share this particular knowledge with your co-researchers or with your juniors or your seniors or your professors or any anyone for that matter. So yes, presentation skills and writing skills are the ways that you're going to tell the public about what research you've done. Now we come to the end of this particular discussion. I am sure that all of you have learned what are the skill sets that you require to be a researcher. If you are already a researcher or you're going to get into research, then make sure that you develop all of these skills. Take time out every day, a few minutes or a few hours, and then work on these skills. See if you're good at it. If you're not, do take help and improv improvise on these skill sets because they're going to be really handy in both your research as well as your job. So thank you so much for watching this video. See you all until next video.